from San Francisco. It's The Cube. Here is your host, Jeff Frick. Hi everybody, Jeff Frick here. We're on the ground at the JW Marriott in San Francisco, California at the Location and Context World 2014. An interesting show, kind of small, but uh, a bunch of passionate people that are early stages in really bringing a whole lot of new capabilities via mobile phone. Uh, it's kind of like GPS for inside, um, which, is, which is really cool using sensors and RFID and a lot of technologies that have been around before Bluetooth, but really now optimized around mobile applications. So we're excited to be joined by our next guest, Patrick Letty, the CEO of Pulsate. Welcome. Thanks very much. Uh, it's certainly a very interesting day here today. We're talking about a lot of different topics, as you said, indoor GPS. But we think it's um, more about, you know, about context, not, not only understanding where a customer is, but also who they are. Um, the mobile device is a great expression of who we are as people, and we can really use that to our advantage. And location is a context, but it's kind of weak <laughs> in of itself. So if we can understand customers, uh, not only where they are, but also their behaviors, their habits, their interests, and we can segment ag against that, that's when we can get really sensible with our interactions and really get a great return and give value to the customer. Yeah, we were talking before we went on air, it's really a layering of the context, right? So it's a layering of A, you know, first off you need the, the map of the store, so you know not only uh, longitude, latitude, and altitude, but actually where you are relative to the store. But then as you said, what you guys help people do is bring in additional layers of context exactly. via external, external sources, I presume, internal sources if they're part of yeah. a rewards program. Talk a little bit about the different sources of contextual data that you can bring to bear. Yeah, absolutely. So Pultate is about true context. So it's the hybridization of different data inputs and really taking information from different sources. So yes, it's you know it's really important to understand customers outside of the store with cellular triatulation and Wi-Fi. And when they come indoors, you know beacons are great for getting that micro location and understanding where people are relative to, the, to their location. Um, but it's only when we understand the person and the expression of who they are. And that's why we look at CRM data and taking in you know, what defines them as a customer. What have they bought before? What are they interested in? And we infer interests on the device by looking at the categories of apps that you have installed. So that when we do go out and engage with you, it's not just based on location data, it's based on um, you know, what you've done before, what you've purchased before. So we're much more relevant, far more integrated with you and considered with, uh, with communications. We're even taking in weather data. So you know, if it starts to rain outside, you're probably more likely to buy an umbrella than a summer dress. So you're like a sub app that sits in, in your customer's app that's pulling that data from their CRM and, and their rewards program. You're pulling the data, the behavioral data sure. on the way they, they operate their phone and operate the app. You're pulling, you're pulling some inferences based on the app set that they have in their phone. That's correct. And you yeah. said you're also pulling social data, you're pulling Twitter feeds or those types of things we as will. well. So if you want to you know, identify your most uh, influential customers and treat them as VIP and you might take your fans or you have people that have just come onto your, into your venue and you know they're tweeting about it and they've got a lot of followers, you can turn them into super fans by segmenting them and saying you, know, you, you guys are getting a free VIP upgrade today. So we take in social data as well and that social data helps us in fair interests. We can look at the categories of apps that are installed, but that's kind of broader by taking in the social data, we can get at exact likes and turn them into interests. So when you're talking to customers and marketers specifically, well, let me ask you another question. Do you integrate back into, back out, if I've got a, a really a, a different kind of marketing uh, application that I'm using, or I'm using different analytics packages like Tableau, do you guys integrate back out we as well? We do, yeah, Tableau, I mean, so we've got a, a RESTful API on top of the whole product. So you can actually, anything you can do as a human user in the interface, you can do, you know, over machines. So you can API in and you can set up a campaign or your geofence, so you can uh, pull a segment, pull your users. Um, you can also pull all of the location analytics data out, and put it into Tableau and visualize it or do whatever right, it is that you right. might want to do. Um, and yes, you can synchronize your CRM with our system as well. So we ingest all of the CRM data, but it's it's important to flush it back on into your own system okay. so that through your other channels, you're making sense of that data. Key to that is privacy. So you want the users to understand that when they're opting in for things like location services, that that location data, that they are aware and opting in for it to be used in other channels. You need to be very careful with that. Right, right. So give us some good examples, right? There's the easy example, I'm standing in front of the shirts at Macy's and I buy a shirt and it says, hey, why don't you go buy a tie or 10% off a tie. But share with us some surprises, some interesting things that nobody expected that using this type of technology um, really uncovered. Sure, I'll, I'll give you an example. So let's take Macy's, let's jump outside the store for a second. Um, we could create a geofence around the store 
And we could use that to try and retarget and recapture disengaged customers that are you know, passing on by. So we'd start off by going into Pulse 8 and creating a segment. So we'd say, show me customers who have been at a beacon in more than 60 days, our entrance beacons. So you haven't had any impressions on your beacons. So you just know they haven't come on into the store. So now we've got our disengaged cohort that we've built. But we could define that as well with some loyalty data. So we bring in the loyalty card for Macy's and we say, you know, who's um, disengaged with the physical store, but also used to be loyal. So this is a customer base that once was loyal and starting to really move away. So now we can create that geofence around the store, connect the segment with the geofence, so that when you walk through outside the store, we process that event on our cloud platform, and it's not enough to just know that you're present. We know there's content attached to that location, and if you exist in the dis disengaged segment, we can say, hey, we really missed you. Great to see you come back. And then based on the loyalty tier, you could get a free glass of champagne or a coffee for coming into the store that day. So so looking down the road, I mean, eventually, do I even have to do anything? Or are these applications just going to start shipping stuff to my house knowing that uh, that I'm ready, I'm, I like it, and this is this is my size? Yeah, well, I think that's definitely where it's heading. And I think the, the, the measurement for how we uh, improve ourselves as a, uh, as a civilization is uh, the measure of, of tasks that we can complete without having to be able to even think about them. Yeah. So the stuff that's just automated for us. And I think true contextual awareness, and we're debating this here today, is when you don't even really know about it, it should just make decisions for you and only interrupt you or only push something to you when it can't really figure out what you want to do. Contextual awareness is about really defining uh, the customer in that moment and preserving the value of their moment and the next moment, which is now, and then the next moment and preserving that value. And then I think as customers, uh, when we understand them and can make decisions for them, and um, they get great value out of that. Yeah. Now how 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 are you finding, or how are market is finding? Because I'm sure they're learning on the fly too, to to be able to create um, promotions opportunities that are actually uh, good for me, um, and and don't become kind of nagful, uh, you know, just like persistent, yeah. like like your little brother, you know, poking yeah. at you all the time. Because I would imagine there's a, a learning curve there, and I would imagine sure. at some point you're like. All right, I'm just going to my car. I don't need any more Macy's offers. You know, yep. I just drop 300 bucks in there. That's an interesting question. I think it's it's really important to not fatigue your customer with this fatigue, kind of information. That's that is for. the key word. It's right. like, oh, I'm getting so much of this stuff, and it's like, you know, delete the app, opt out. So you need to be really careful with what you send to customers, and that's where the segmentation comes into it. So if there's only one thing that you could send that customer walking into the store that day, you might have, you know, a thousand beacons, you might have 10,000 campaigns. But if you really narrow it down with great segmentation, you can send the most relevant content to that person when they walk in, the right, and really delivering on that message of the right place, the right time. Uh, so I think that's important. That's kind of like passively um, pinging users as they walk around the store while the device might be in their pocket. But I think there is a, um, a new way of looking at it. So if they actually actively engage with the app and have the app open, you could build like a context feed of showing them products that are around the location that are near them, that are proximal to them. But can't they see them? But also they can see them with their eyes, but you know, you might want to highlight certain features. You might want to spotlight things that you know they're interested in that could be over there and I'm actually heading this way. So on a radar, you know, show that product. It's of interest to them. Um, show them where it is and what makes it unique and yeah. maybe use that to influence their, you know, at the, at the point of purchase. Um, you can bring in weather data and all sorts of emergent data and bring in their actions so you know whether someone is w running or walking or right. cycling or driving and use that to base your decision on wh whether you message them or not. Um, you know, are they on a phone call? Do they have low battery? Is their internet connection good or bad? Because if it is, oh, you're at the wrong, you know what I mean? Right. You don't want to be going in with a low battery per internet connection and someone is driving by the site. Don't fatigue them if right. that is their context. Right. Right. Everyone else, our competitors, is focused on we put a beacon there, someone walks past, they're an unknown, we don't know about their state, we don't know their somatic data, any emergent data. It's like, let's ping them a coupon. So we need to kind of raise the awareness uh, for this technology and what's really possible once we look at the hybridization of data inputs. Wow, so yeah. still early days, still a lot of opportunity. So Patrick, thanks for stopping by. Patrick thanks. Letty from Pulse8, CEO. Uh, I'm Jeff Frick, we're on the ground at Location and Context World 2014 in San Francisco at the JW Marriott. You're watching theCUBE.